and I wish you a very happy Easter and welcome you to this week's Sunday Supplement. It's always great to have you with us. Hopefully as restrictions begin to lift, you'll be able to see once again those people who you've not been able to see for a little while. If you happen to be new or visiting us for the very first time, can I extend a special warm welcome to you. Andy is going to start with a reading from John's Gospel. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the entrance. She came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Three people all see the same thing. The tomb of Joseph of Arimathea is empty. Mary was the first to arrive and she was shocked to see that the stone that had been placed there for security was now rolled back and that Jesus' body was no longer there. The tomb was empty. She runs to tell Peter and John, who also witnessed the same thing, that the body of Jesus is absent. Three people see the same thing, but come to three different conclusions about what has happened. Mary's initial conclusion is that Jesus' body has either been moved or stolen. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him, she blurts out to Peter and John. She says they have either moved or stolen the body. Well, who are the they that she's referring to? Well, they are either the Jewish or the Roman authorities. You see, Mary comes to a logical conclusion. She looks in the tomb and she sees that Jesus' body is no longer there and she thinks to herself, well, surely they have either moved or stolen the body. It's the only answer that makes any sense. And many people down the centuries have thought the same thing. Maybe like Mary, you would agree that the only sensible explanation for the empty tomb is that the Roman or Jewish authorities moved or stole the body. You see, the only problem with this hypothesis is that firstly it was a capital offence to move or interfere in any way with dead bodies. And secondly, Peter, who we're going to consider in a moment, well, he stands up in front of the same Jewish authorities and he tells them that he's actually seen Jesus with his own eyes. Given this explosive claim, well, the Jewish authorities, they only needed to produce the body, but they didn't. You see, maybe you are a Mary. You think that the only logical explanation of Christians claiming that the tomb was empty is the fact that the Roman or Jewish authorities stole or moved the body. In Luke chapter 24 and verse 12, we read the following. Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. You see, Peter's reaction to the empty tomb is one of bewilderment. He couldn't understand it. He couldn't make sense of it. And that may be true for you. Maybe as you hear Christians claim that the central event of Christianity is that Jesus has risen from the dead, you too are bewildered. Maybe you too are thinking to yourself, it doesn't make any sense. Three people see the same thing, but come to three different conclusions. 
Mary concludes that the body has been stolen. Peter is bewildered by it all. And that brings us to John and four important words. He saw and believed. Well, we know what he saw, an empty tomb. But what is it he believes? You see, John believes that Jesus is the first person in human history to be raised into his resurrected body. Out of death has come resurrected life. You see, Peter, Mary and John and most Jewish people at that time, well, they would have believed the following. You see, they would have believed that when we die, what happens is that our bodies decay, but our soul, if you like, goes up into heaven. Heaven is, if you like, a waiting room. And at some point in the future on that last day, what is going to happen is that our souls are going to be reunited with our resurrected bodies. In his first letter to the church in Corinth, Paul explains this as follows. He says, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. John looks and believes. He believes that Jesus has indeed been raised into his resurrected body. You see, what is going to happen is that even though Mary initially thinks that the body has been moved or stolen, even though Peter is bewildered and confused, they're both going to discover that Jesus has indeed been raised from the dead. Peter was going to see Jesus later on that evening. Mary, almost minutes later, once Peter and John had left the empty tomb, well, she was going to meet Jesus in person herself. And a great number of people went on to see Jesus in his resurrected body. So on this Easter Sunday, can I ask you a question? Which of these three are you? Are you a Mary? who believes that Jesus didn't rise from the dead, that the Jewish authority simply moved or stole the body? Are you a Peter? Are you still confused and bewildered? Or are you a John? You see, do you firmly believe that the reason Easter Sunday is so important is because Jesus is the first person in human history to be raised into his resurrected body? And the fact is that each and every one of us who know and love and trust the Lord Jesus, well, that's exactly what we have to look forward to as well. Out of Jesus' death comes a promise of resurrected life. Lord Jesus Christ, the disciples failed at first to believe in the empty tomb, dismissing it as so much nonsense, and we too are hesitant to believe sometimes fearful of indulging in wishful thinking, in what seems too good to be true. The Apostle Thomas refused to accept you had truly risen, insisting he would not accept it until he could see you for himself, touch and feel your wounds, and we too struggle with doubt, questions to which we cannot find the answers. Your followers on the Emmaus Road and Mary in the garden failed to recognise you, though you stood by their side, and our eyes too can be closed to your living presence, here with us now. Yet you greeted the disciples in the upper room, you showed yourself to Thomas, you spoke to Mary, and you made yourself known through bread and wine. Across the centuries you have likewise met with your people, guiding, nurturing and inspiring through your spirit. You have changed history, changed lives and changed us. Amen. This is Holy Communion Here at the table of the Lord Where we remember His body broken And His blood that was poured out They hung Him there at Calvary the Lamb of God for all to see His love for us kept Him on that tree till 
Hello, the Hive Community Centre is open for activities that are allowed under COVID-19 restrictions. We have made great progress with the building and most small rooms have been decorated, some building work done and systems have been put in place so that things work smoothly. You must come and visit and see the changes made to the art room, the Old Youth Connect office and the three small rooms off the main area. So what can the Hive offer you at the moment? Swallow Charity is running a takeaway cafe service from The Hive and here is Angela to tell you more about what they do. The Swallows is a local based charity and we support adults with um, learning disabilities. We support them to attend our courses, um, our two cafes now and all of our work skills courses too. All of our members with learning disabilities, they help prepare all of our takeaway food, um, things such as paninis, um, sandwiches and pizzas. And then we spend the afternoons baking all of our cakes and they thoroughly enjoy doing that. Um, we've been preparing meals for the primary school and um, that's been going down fabulously. I like working at the Hive Cafe in Peasdown because I like interacting with the public and doing good customer services. Peasdown Community Library runs from the Hive. Karen Walker is here to tell you more. The library is situated in the Hive on um, Bath Road, Peasdown St John and it's a real privilege for us to be able to use this room here. So as you enter the building, the library is on the left hand side, the first door as you come through. Uh, we've been open since December and we've had a really great volunteer based people and 
joining us since December and it's a great pleasure to be part of the community, serving the community. If all goes to plan, Chris Scorer will start detached youth work over Easter and subject to Covid restrictions being eased, will start youth work sessions towards the end of May. In anticipation of the easing of restrictions, the Hive is now taking bookings for sports, exercise and creative groups. Mini Police will start after Easter and the rooms are already being used by Bain Social Services and Mentoring Plus and we are looking to bring other service providers into the building. But please drop in to buy a coffee or a takeaway lunch and see for yourself how it has changed. Hello church. Um, this is a strange face for you to see, but I've been in isolating as I've been told to do. But um, I'm getting on very well with my ankle and foot. Um, and today I plucked up courage to cross the bypass. As I was doing so, it was at the um, Equic Lane crossing. I got onto the island in the middle and was waiting and the cars came streaming round from the left. The first one just pulled up slowly and winked its, wink its blinkers at me and told me to cross. So I thought, oh, thank you, and went across. Walked on round my round, my, my walk, and I came to um, the Mercedes roundabout crossing and I waited there to cross and again some cars came down and the first one stopped waved me across and I thought what's going on they must see that I'm a bit nervous about crossing at the bypass or well, the angels are looking on so I just wanted to thank church for all the prayers they've been very very helpful and um, there is power in prayer and I've, I've felt this tremendously thank you during lockdown, um, while I've been furloughed, I've had a little bit of time on a Monday and um, I got quite frustrated being furloughed and at home and without a sense of purpose at times. And so I actually ended up volunteering at um, Shonks Pharmacy in Peasdown to deliver drugs on a Monday um, when they don't have a paid um, employed staff member to do that. Um, and so, yeah, I've been collecting medication at 11 o'clock in the morning on a Monday and delivering it around Peace Town and it's been, it's been a joy. Um, there's been some, yeah, some really great learning experiences out of it. Um, I've been struck by how many people live in isolation in our community, how many people live with long-term chronic conditions that they need frequent, um, drugs and medication for. Um, and also how many people have carers coming into their homes to support them um, so that they can stay um, at home while they are poorly. Um, I've been struck by how many people are frightened to come and answer their door during COVID times um, and just how, how tough lockdown has been for those who've been shielding and who continue to shield until the end of this week. Um, my time as a volunteer has come to an end because it's the school holidays and little ones will be opening soon. Um, but yeah, I've learned a lot about our community. I've found different roads that I've never been down and um, different homes that were just tucked away and I had no idea they were there. Um, I've struggled to find some homes and unnumbered homes and um, the, yeah, the list goes on. So it's it's been really interesting and um, yeah, it's been a good experience, um, but I'm ready to be back a little one soon.
thank you for being with us. It's always a delight to see you. Please do join us again next week when we'll be continuing with our sermon series, Considering Life Lessons from John's Gospel. <laughs>